Welcome to the Prophecy Club. We're going to continue talking with Pastor Massey as he is going to be speaking to the Prophecy Club, making three DVDs, and he's also got a new book coming out. The DVDs are Miracles in Pakistan. That's Friday, May 13th. That's his testimony. Visits to Heaven and Hell, and I can't wait to get to let him tell you about that. Saturday, 14th, and then Sunday, May 15th, 9 to noon, the main talk on the Babylonians are coming. Now, we're going to continue with his testimony. reason is I want you to know a lot about that testimony, to know that this is God talking to him. Then we're going to maybe get into his visits about heaven and hell, and eventually we're going to get more to the Babylonians are coming. But I'm going to give you a couple of bullet points to look forward to. First of all, Jesus came to him in 1989, began to speak to him audibly, and as a result, he got saved, and then he moved to America in 1999. He, him and his wife have started like over 300 churches. He's seen over 23,000 people baptized in Pakistan. How about that one? <laughs> That's pretty good, isn't it? He says that God told him, these are some of the bullet points from some of the visions from his The Babylonians Are Coming DVD. He says that he was told that the churches in America are full of goats. And he says what is coming is going to be the Babylonians are coming to America similar to to what happened in Jeremiah. He was told that America will be conquered. He says that he was shown that Obama is preparing an elite military wearing masks to find, search out, and kill Christians. He confirms what Dimitri Dudeman was told. The internal revolution is all part of it. Nuclear bombs hitting America. But he was also shown uh, row after row after row of American houses burning uh, he says that when the Russians come, they not only launch the surprise nuclear attack from submarines, but apparently they also have like troop carriers because he saw submarines coming up and Russians and Orientals, probably North Koreans, uh, coming out of the submarines and firing with their automatic weapons and the American bullets would not fire on them. The invaders take over America. He says that your sons and daughters will be captured, tortured and killed. Also, he saw not only the American homes burning, but also coastal cities and the ships. In other words, like all of the yachts and things like that, all burning, all burning. In other words, they come in and destroy America. Okay, Pastor Massey, what did the Lord show you about Trump? I understand he showed you something e even the last few days. The Lord is showing to me that the Trump has a heart for the persecuted Christians. He cared for the persecuted Christians, and he is the one who will really stand for the persecuted church. In fact, I met him in a dream, allowed me to meet him in a dream, and I shared his future and things, and uh, then I prayed for him, praised God in the dream. I mean, why God is showing to me all these things? I'm not a politician, but one of the things I say even you can search under my name on a Google. You know, I, one thing I say, I am not a politically correct person. I simply, you know, political correctness simply means lying. And if somebody is a politically correct, that person is nothing but a liar. I told right up front, I'm not going to be politically correct. I'm going to speak the truth because the Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. I'm just asking the Lord to protect this man, please give us at least eight more years. Please, eight more years. That would be the best we can pray. And I'm encouraging brothers and sisters to fast every week, three days, Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday, Thursday. Pray for Trump. Pray that God will allow him to come into this White House. We, uh, we definitely have to pray for his protection. Yes. I, I think to. he is our last best chance, and, and I've said this in yesterday's program, the thing about him that separates him from all of the other candidates, whoever they are, and that is what he is saying messes with the plans for a new world order. It messes with the plans for a world government. When he says, make America great, that's not what they want. They want to pull America down and merge it into, uh, their ideal uh, plan is to merge it into a world government. When he says, stop the immigration, that's not what they want. They want to merge Canada, Mexico, and the United States all together. When he says, build a wall, that's not what they want. Everything he is for is tearing up their new world order plans. That's not true of any other candidate. 
Yeah, we don't pray. We aren't going to have any chance at a revival. Matter of fact, what I've been praying in my prayer closet the last couple of nights is, Lord, give us a chance. Give us a chance at revival. Yes, the sports stadiums need to be filled, but we need to have a man that will allow those things to happen. It could delay America's judgment, and that's what we need to pray for. Okay. If you have watched the movie called 2016, when Obama went in Kenya and he was on his father's tomb and he grabbed the dirt on his hand and he made this vow that he will make America like Kenya. If you remember that. Uh, no, I didn't see that. But that sounds about right. I, I, matter of fact, for the record, that. I think, it, 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 let me say for the record here, I respect the office of the president of the United States. But I think that Obama is a closet Muslim, a closet communist. And I think that T.D. Hale was correct with his dream when he saw that Obama would be in the White House and complicit with the fall of America. Now, I also think that these are warning dreams. And if America stops sending repents and turns to Jesus enough, at least we can delay it. And maybe not remove it, but let's, let's do what we can to slow it or to diminish the judgment coming on America. Yes, we can only delay it. It will not be finished. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Totally. It will be delayed yeah, yeah. if we truly, truly repent. And the verse on that is Jeremiah 51, verse 9. We would have healed Babylon, but she would not be healed. Forsake her and let every man returning to his own country. So the judgment is set. That's what the angel told Demetri to. The judgment is set. It, America will fall. But I would much rather America fall in 20 years rather than two years. Okay, that's our point. We got to pray, guys. We got to pray. Yeah, and, and the shocking thing was when I was talking, you know, when God was showing to me about Trump, I was very much shocked. I, I, you know, like when God starts showing me this vision, that his own party wants to remove him from the face of the earth. That was really shocking to me. I said, how come it should be the Democrat? But it's the, his own party doesn't Well, it like just him. shows us the evil in high places. Speaking of that, I have uh, I've been admonished of Leslie not to, to tell you folks this, but I keep... It keeps jumping in my heart to tell you. So here you go. I'm going to tell you something that I have been admonished not to tell you. So here it is. About three months ago, Leslie gets up one morning and she says, I think we're supposed to get our LTC. That's a license to carry a firearm. I said, really? I mean, I was shocked. Really? I mean, you know, God telling a minister of the gospel to go get an LTC? Are you serious? So what I do? Nothing. About three weeks later, she gets up and she says, I had a dream last night. Well, when Leslie has a dream, everything stops, and I sit down and I listen because I've learned she ain't playing games, okay? and it, it, She doesn't have pizza dreams. When she says God spoke to me in a dream, I know it's real, and she gets my full attention. So I said, I'm listening. She said, God told me that we need to go get our license to carry. I was shocked again. I said, Really? Is it come to that, or is God telling his ministers to go get a license to carry a firearm, really? So what I do, um, I'm embarrassed to say nothing. <laughs> but about three, maybe four weeks after that, she gets up, and I said, I, I felt impressed to say, I said, did you have a dream last night? Now, I think in our 33 years of marriage, that's the first time I asked her if she had a dream. But I get up, and I said, did you have a dream last night? She said, yes. I said, I'm listening. She said, God told me for the third time we need to go get our license to carry a firearm permit. So at that, I took it serious, and we have now gone down and given our digital fingerprints, and we will be taking classes. Now, I got to ask myself, why, why would God tell a minister of the gospel to go get an LTC? What's up? Well, we've been stewing on this thing now for several months. And Leslie and I had a conversation the other day, and I said, what do you think's up? She said, I think that a time is coming when a person will not be able to get it anymore, and I think the time is coming when if you don't have it, they may confiscate your weapons. I said, that's exactly what I get to. So uh, that's your warning. That's your, maybe your first lesson only warning. 
So if you believe God is speaking to Leslie, and I do, then you will know what to do. God actually spoke the same thing to me. Oh, really? Okay, there you go, brothers and sisters. That's in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Let a thing be established. <laughs> so praise God. So have you got your LTC? No, God is actually telling me to move to Texas from Colorado. Yeah, well, we will see about that getting done, too. Uh, so he lives in Colorado. Speaking of that, you have a website. You want to give your website to the people? Yes, it's a persecutedchristians.org. Persecutedchristians.org. And I would love to come uh, in the churches and speak if they like me to. Okay. Do you want to give your email, or is your email on your website? Uh, yeah, they can contact me via website. Persecutedchristians.org. And uh, uh, that's it. You know, they can reach to me. Okay. There you go, folks. All right. Now, uh, let's let's get on with your tearing the pages of the Quran. I understand there was some terrible persecution involved in that in Pakistan. Tell us about that. When we started working in Pakistan in a year and a half, we were really moving so fast and so quick. Um, God was just moving with signs and wonders and miracles. Demons were casted out. Blind eyes were opened. Praise God. And uh, you know, people, were, people were healed on a daily basis. It was so wonderful. It was amazing, amazing. People were getting baptized, and uh, just like the way it was happening, I know that some of the people in my meeting, uh, I was preaching in one place, and uh, uh, some of the people I was preaching, you know how this lady, she touched the hem of the garments of Jesus, and some people, they just they, they heard that message, that they were touching me, and they were getting healed. Praise God. That was amazing. This is the way we were able to start 14 churches in a year and a half. This, this was the hand of God. I give all glory to Jesus Christ, my Lord, my Savior, my king, my master. He is alone worthy of Amen. all glory, power, and honor. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and as uh, we were working there, we were accused by the Muslims that we have torn the pages of the Quran and have written evil things against Muhammad. As you know, that there's a uh, law in Pakistan called the uh, blasphemy law. It's almost everywhere in any Muslim country and uh, that anybody who says against Islam, Quran, and Muhammad, that person should be put to death. And that is in the Quran, by the way. That is in the Sharia law. It's also in the Quran. If anybody say anything evil against Islam, that person should be put to death. That's in the Sharia law. That is in the Quran. That is in the Hadith. So we show this thing because some people are saying, oh, Sharia is compatible to the Constitution of United States. No, this is not true. Don't buy this lie. Sharia is an evil law. So you will not be, uh, be, be a first-class citizen in America if you allow the Sharia law to come into this country. So that's the one thing I also want to talk about. <clears throat> you might also say you won't be breathing if you allow the Sharia law to come into this country. <laughs> no, no, you will be you will be dead. You will be just finished under Sharia law. And uh, that is also part of when I say Babylonians are coming, that is also the part of you know what uh, uh, these these Russians and all these guys. Are, it's not just the Russians; it's Iran and Muslim countries going to be coming with them. So that's one of the things you should know that. So, Amen. Uh, that's right. So uh, you should, you know, it's better for you to wake up right now and stand behind the guy who is the anti-Islam and really willing to stand up against this these Muslim plan and stop this immigration things that, you know, we could have the better ways to bring the people legally, not illegal way. So this is something. Uh, so what happened? I am really concerned about America because uh, one of the things I knew that we were persecuted by the Muslims in Pakistan. We were persecuted by the Muslims in South Africa. And we don't want you to happen the same thing with you in the United States. So please wake up. Otherwise, you're going to be persecuted by the Muslims in the United States. So wake up before it's too late. <clears throat> so what happened? 
uh, we were accused, and uh, this news was spread all over that we have done those things. And let me also explain to you that the Christians in Pakistan are, are segregated from the rest of society because of the Christian faith. Most Christians will live in a Christian, uh, there's a Christian garrison in a, in a lower class area of the town, a lower class area of the city. Most Christians are involved in the menial jobs, cleaning bathroom, toilet, sweeping roads for the Muslim. Most Christians are involved in, uh, in making bricks for the Muslims on the brick kilns and get persecuted, abused, sexually abused, beaten, killed, burned alive. These kind of things happen on a daily basis with the Christians in the Muslim country, in Pakistan, and other Muslim countries. It's, it's, a, it's a very common thing. And over here we say Islam is such a wonderful, peace-loving religion. If this is really true, why it is not practiced in the Muslim country where they are in majority? That's a lie from the devil. That's a lie from the pedophile. It's not a religion of peace and love. It's a religion of violence, killing, murdering, and bloodshed. Believe me, that's what Quran really talks about. So <clears throat> what happened, we were, uh, we were attacked. We were living in those Christian villages, and uh, uh, we were... When the news was spread that we have torn the pages of the Quran and have written evil things against Muhammad, around about 70 to 80,000 Muslims with the 400 Pakistani government police, they came. Let me also mention something here. Before, before Muslim mob comes to attack us in those villages, this is something happened. The police came. 400 police officers came in our town and they told to the mayor, you know, we call number that in, in Urdu language, to the mayor of our town, tell all the people, those who have numbers, the weapons, the guns, hand them over to the police because Muslims are going to be coming, they're going to be just going to have a peaceful protest. And we don't want that these Christians will open fire on them. So please give us your guns, and then it will be pretty much safe. There will be no more blood. Okay, so you would advise.